Hi everyone, and uh, welcome to what's going to be a new guitar project on my uh, CNC channel. And uh, again, we're going to be building a Fender guitar, and you can see it in front of you here. It looks a bit shabby, doesn't it? Uh, but this is actually the Andy Summers uh, tribute guitar that Fender built back in 2007. It's a, basically a replica of his 1961 or 62 uh, Fender Telecaster which uh, was heavily modified um, before he got hold of it I believe from a student of his when he was living out in uh, Los Angeles in the early 70s uh, and it had a fair bit of travel um, when he got hold of it and I think he made a couple of minor modifications to it after he got hold of it so there's the tuning machines for example um, it's quite a unique guitar it's got some interesting features on it but more importantly it's got a set of tones and capabilities which essentially lend itself to the uh, police sound if you're not familiar with Andy Summers um, playing uh, where have you been <laughs> for the last uh, 30 40 odd years good lord is it that long um, yeah and um, certainly the police sound was pretty much um, made using this particular instrument. I do have a Telecaster of my own US standard one. Uh, you can get pretty close, but you can't get all the way, and there's a couple of reasons for that. But we'll come to those as we start building it, but you can see part of that is on the back there with that big uh, black scratch plate cover um, hiding you know, some electronic wizardry in the back of the body there. So, um, it's going to be an interesting project because I'm going to try and get as close as I can to the original guitar, probably closer in some respects than Fender did with the Tribute, um, but in others I'm going to make one compromise I know of so far, and that's, that is I'm going to use a double action truss rod uh, in the neck, but still retain the heel adjustment um, for it. So we'll deal with that when we come to it. Uh, and also the Tribute, for some reason, had a nine and a half inch uh, fingerboard radius, which I'm pretty sure the original instrument couldn't have had. It would have had a seven and a quarter inch, which was the standard Fender uh, fingerboard radius at that time. So anyway, where are we going to start? So we're going to start with CAD and CAM as usual. And if I get rid of the picture of the guitar, the first thing I did to do this was go off to the internet and find some plans. And there's plenty of plans for Telecasters out there. We're going to have to do a bit of uh, adaptation as we go along, because obviously a Telecaster has two single coil pickups, and the Andy Summers version has a humbucker in the neck position, so that's got to be changed from the original. But anyway... Um, PDF plans. I found this one for the body, which seems to be the kind of latest, if you like, uh, revision of a set of a series of plans out there. This was off the TDPRI um, forum. And similarly, I got hold of this neck one, which is a lot simpler and is pretty much exactly what we need. Um, because the more simple your line diagrams the easier it is to get it into Fusion 360 which is what we're going to be using so um, but I'm going to start with the neck and we'll come to the body later so what we need to do is get this PDF into the uh, into Fusion 360 and the way I do that and I'm going to flick to a screenshot is um, use the package called Cut2D by Vectric and it was the cam package that I used to use a lot, and I do occasionally still use it, but not very much since switching to Fusion. Um, but what I do use it for is the fact that you can, um, unlike Fusion 360, where you can't drop a PDF in and immediately start working on it, you can uh, import a PDF and then immediately export that uh, to a DXF. Uh, format which you can then put into Fusion 360 and it comes up as a sketch in Fusion 360 which is great. Um, so in order to get this across what we did need to do was a bit of tidy up on it and that was basically a choice here of which of the spacings for the 12 fret 
12th fret, sorry, um, dot markers we needed to use. Now, we needed the wider versions because that was essentially the vintage wider versions, uh, which I believe is 61, 62 correct. And I think it was CBS period or later that they actually went to like a narrow uh, spacing for those. So we deleted those. But once we'd done that, we could then basically export this to DXF and then we could drop that into Fusion 360 and start working on it as a sketch. So here we are with that in as a sketch. Now you might see some additional lines on here which we'll come to in a bit. Um, but as with any imported PDF stroke DXF that you put into Fusion 360, um, one thing you have to do first is most of the lines, see like this line here, will be one line and that's fine. Um, but any court curves or circles uh, you will need to essentially replace. So essentially I've replaced all these circles which are made up of, um, you know, about 30 odd segments from the import you need to replace with essentially the circle tool in in the sketch facility within Fusion 360. Similarly you need to use the spline tool to replace any of these um, kind of compound curves. Now they've actually been split up again on here but if we just go to there we go you can see this should be he says yeah, there, he's trying to get his things. There, <laughs> okay. So you can see that we've created essentially a single spline curve to trace over the top of the segmented curves. It's still got segments in it, but um, it's uh, one continuous vector line, um, especially for stuff like, like this one. There you go. Um, for the for the rest of the headstock. So having done all of that, uh, there was a couple of other bits I needed to do. I needed to redraw the truss rod uh, slot on the back of the neck here because we're going to go for the you know standard skunk stripe, um, but needed to redraw that for the truss rod that I'm going to use double action one. And we'll come to that in a second. So let's just put this back into isometric view. So we've got our sketch. Now I've added a bunch of lines in here and I'll come to those in a minute but you'll notice they're around the transition um, areas for both the neck to headstock and there is another sketch actually below here if I can find it. Uh, there it is. There's one if you like at the bottom of the neck <laughs> which is for the and you can see all these lines here which is on the heel uh, to neck transition area as well. And I'll come to that because this is a different method of modeling than I use for the Jaguar neck. And I hope, hopefully, it's going to work out um, better in terms of its results than the method I use for the Jaguar neck. If you want to see the Jaguar neck, there's a series playlist on my channel with the, I think it's the first and second and third videos on there showing how I did the Jaguar neck. So anyway, let's just turn that off again. And the first thing we needed to do was extrude this bit of the sketch down by 25.4 mil or one inch, which is essentially the total thickness on a, on a fender neck. So if I just do that, I'll show you basically what that looks like. So you end up with a block of material and this is like um, I guess it's kind of what would you get if you just did a contour um, but then we still need to start putting some details on that so what we then do is we do a push-pull cut for each of the machine head holes but we didn't yet do the dot markers or the fret slots and, it's, uh, and the main reason for that. But what we did do is we took this sketch, part of the sketch here, the cross section, um, and we created a new sketch. 
at 90 degrees and you can see this shape here once I've taken some of the geometry out is kind of buried in the middle of this and I've put some more sections around the outside and the reason for that is we can use this essentially to cut by doing a push pull for example so like this one here if we push and pull this across here and cut it's essentially going to take a lump if you like out of that block there see um, similarly we can take this one and it will give us the um, heel sorry not the heel the headstock uh, to neck top transition obviously it won't do the bottom one because the bottom ones are kind of complex 3d transition but this one is just a basically and what you um, is just basically a kind of 2d operation at a 90 degree angle to the plans if you like uh, and what that would normally have been done with in the fender factory is using a spindle sander and just running this thing up so probably the guy who made the guitar would have if i deselect that would have done essentially this with a some kind of saw band saw probably and then done this piece by pushing this against a spindle sander and you can still do it that way and I also finish it uh, uh, using that method as well so what we needed to do then was start basically profiling the back of the neck from this block the way we did this is what I needed to do was import if you like a cross section now if I bring up this now what you can do is you can insert and you can insert a canvas so you create um, a plane a sketch plane and then you can insert a canvas onto that sketch plane and this canvas uh, or you can insert a canvas directly into the model and what this gave us essentially is a profile for the neck or an approximation of it that we could then use on a sketch and there's our sketch just bring that around so it looks a bit yeah there you go so we did a sketch and did an approximation of the um, profile radius which is slightly asymmetrical but hey ho that's what it looks like on the real guitar this is a uh, an actual fender telecaster neck <laughs> that's been um, that's been sawn up specifically specifically for the purpose of um, showing the profile so we've taken that and what we can then do is we can take that sketch and copy it to a bunch of sketch planes and bits. so what we did here is, is is we copied that sketch now what I did is it put it so it matched up with one corner or intersection between the fret marker and um, and the side of the neck and then essentially took a measurement of this line at the top which only came up to about here where my mouse cursor is hopefully um, took another measurement for the width of the neck at that point and then divided one by the other to essentially get a ratio then essentially you can rescale the sketch uh, by going to modify scale click on the actual sketch itself and then it lets you um, select a point which is like the one that's not or the one that's joined and then select uh, then tap in essentially the scale amount which is that division result uh, and what that does is it rescales that profile uniformly to match the width of the neck so essentially your profile uh, can will remain the same but it will be a different width if you like a different scale as you move up the neck so essentially what we end up with is a whole bunch of ribs like this and we can then use the loft tool to essentially loft between each of these ribs which then gives us our neck profile which is brilliant so that worked really well um, 
and I'm not even sure if I've still got that body left so apologies for that so that gets us essentially the main body of the neck and then we needed to work on the transitions you'll remember that we've got most of the um, neck body done anyway and the way we do the transitions is pretty similar however what I needed to do was um, they were a more complex shape and I couldn't obviously find a load of cross sections <laughs> on the internet so what I had to do was get a profile gauge uh, which I'll put a picture up of now and what that allows me to do is it allowed me to take essentially five mil every five mil allowed me to take a profile off of um, my actual fender telecaster um, from the nut slot here all the way up to this point where the um, transition kind of ceases if you like or mostly ceases and basically draw those out onto a piece of paper scan the paper in which then I could put in as a canvas again and you can see that there and then what we could do is we can take so we'd basically do a trace over onto a sketch and we can then so we can copy these into the right position on the neck using essentially the same method we did for the other um, for the other profiles so you end up essentially with a set of and then we end up with essentially our transition so we can then use the loft tool between each of these again and join that essentially to the end of the uh, headstock which is the bit where it's flat on both sides and that does us that end and then essentially we could do the same at the other end however for the other end what I did was a slightly different method so uh, if I just bring up this one here and get rid of that one there we essentially got our five mil ribs again if you like spacing and we knew from this side profile here this arc so we drew this arc if I bring sketch yeah so we create a sketch on this plane here and we drew this arc here this one here that's highlighted hopefully yep um, then we essentially drew vertical lines up from our spacings on the actual main sketch on the bottom so we drew them vertically and then we just chopped off the bottom part of it so you've only got this piece here left then essentially once we've got all those points we can then start to create and let me bring those up so we can start to create our ribs you see so we've got one there where we've got a straight line from there to there that's fine that's what's going to match we've got essentially a straight line across this flat piece of the hill where it tapers into the center of the uh, back of the neck there um, this straight line that I'm highlighting there and then essentially we just create an arc um, between these two points and in fact what I did is I did one side and then mirrored that um, use the mirror tool to create the other side so they're exactly the same and a bit of a palaver and it did take me a little while um, but essentially what you start end to end up with is a set of ribs like this which you can then loft to create a body and join that transition to the main piece of the neck there you've already got the heel from your uh, main extrude right at the beginning uh, then you've got your other transition and again the headstock you've already got from your main um, extrude at the beginning if you remember and what you end up with is pretty much let me just clear some of this stuff out of the way 
Yeah, so what you end up with is this. So essentially we've got our flat neck and I've also actually done the extrude on the nut slot there um, from the top sketch. So that's uh, this sketch here. You can just do an extrude of that piece there down into the into the uh, neck to create the nut slot. Uh, and then you're essentially left with a completely flat neck but you do now have essentially the hard bit done which is the transition at the back now it's a little bit lumpy here but that should take a bit of minimal sanding to smooth that out but the main thing is is you've got the transition there's also a bit of a, a lump here that we'll have to take down but again that should be pretty minor sanding to get that smoothed out to the rest of it and blended in so um, whereas the heel pretty much nothing needs to be done there that's all pretty much ready to go so what we do need to do now is we need to obviously radius the fingerboard and this is the same method I used in the Jaguar video essentially we draw and I'm gonna to have to find it here we draw a seven and a quarter inch radius circle uh, which we basically position so that its top is touching the halfway point across the flat fingerboards the center line Ooh, that line there essentially and then what we do is we can take this section here uh, and we just basically run an, a cut extrude all the way down the neck and essentially that's how you create a fingerboard radius in CAD in there but essentially what, what you do is you you extrude it across and it basically cuts uh, the body and if you and then you get rid of the cut off bit and that leaves you with a radius fingerboard then really it's just a case of taking the original sketch again making sure you've got um, a, um, a 0.6 millimeter wide rectangle at the point uh, where the fret line is and then you take each one of those and you extrude it down to cut the essentially the virtual fret slots into the CAD diagram and similarly you do the same thing with the fret dot markers take that sketch off and you've got the top of your fretboard done that's pretty much it apart from the truss rod slot on the back which you take the other sketch, put it where I want it. There you go. And I did have to resize this, so I had to resize the um, the plan so that a it was 6.35, so it's quarter inch, I think, which is the standard kind of truss rod size, and it wasn't that off the plan, uh, but also gave me enough room so that there it is. What I ended up with was uh, enough room for the cross slot adjuster uh, rather than the Allen key hex key. And what we're going to do is we're going to modify a truss rod so it's got one of those on the end of it and drill the um, hole into the end of the truss rod here. So to all intents and purposes from the outside this will look like a vintage neck but buried inside it will be a double action truss rod rather than single action so you're still going to have uh, you'll still have the piece of walnut insert in this area here and you'll still have the truss rod adjuster at the heel end so there we are pretty long video as, as I think the first neck on the last one was but that's how you create a neck for Fusion 360. Yes, what I'll do is we'll call it there because we've got our, our neck essentially built in CAD. Uh, and it's pretty much ready to be machined, if you like. Um, the next video I will deal with the cam uh, that we're using to essentially cut this neck out. There are some differences between this and the Jaguar one that's worth um, bearing with. Uh, there's going to be a couple of 
new things that I haven't done before with Fusion 360. Um, and mostly it revolves around the fact that we're going to have a, and there's no flat surface to put our slab of wood down on this side. And similarly, there's no flat surface on the other side really to speak of. So thanks for watching this video as ever, and I will see you shortly um, when we will go into the cam side of it and then get this over to the uh, machine for cutting. So thanks a lot, see you in the next one.